Caverdale. Uh, so did we got the cancellation notice last Thursday, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the day we were leaving to go to the city tournament, yeah. Yeah, but we actually got – that was the postponement. Oh, oh, the, oh, you're talking about the cancellation. Yeah, cancellation yeah, yeah, yeah. was last yep. Thursday. That's yep. when I was actually in Brexville that day that I told you I was at uh, the Brexville no. re- Reservation. But um, so what were you guys up – what were you doing last week? I mean, did you – we already saw this coming, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, you, what do you say to your guys, you know, for for three weeks? What do you say to your guys? You know, Zeb, it was weird. I think um, the, the the day we were leaving for the state tournament and we, we got the, the notice that it was postponed, um, probably the toughest day in, in coaching for me. Um, I don't know. It was a weird feeling to have a group of kids sitting in front of you um, looking at you for, for an answer and, and not knowing what to tell them. You know, it was, a, it was a tough day to say the least for probably coaches all over Ohio. Um, fast forward to the actual cancelization that happened last week. Um, I think we all knew it was coming. Um, but for some reason, when we got the official email, I, he still gave you this like eerie pit in your stomach. Like it was just, it was just official, you know, and um, just texting with the kids and, and, and just letting them know that it had officially been um, canceled. Um, I don't know. It was sort of like reliving it all over again. I mean, you know, like you're saying, I think we all knew this was what was coming. And then, you know, we keep getting handed down more and more information. Um, now they push school back another month because it was supposed to be uh, Monday, April 6th is when we were supposed to go back. I don't know about Brexville. When was Brexville supposed to go back? Same, yeah, April 6th. Yeah, so we're on spring break. We were on spring break last week. And then this week was supposed to be the week we were uh, – no, this is – dude, I can't even – honestly, I can't even keep track of it. Like – <laughs> I'm not even like, I, yeah, no, we were supposed to go back Monday. That's what yeah. it was. April 6th, I want to, I can't even keep track of it because it's so wild. It's like that movie with Bill Murray, Groundhog's Day. I keep seeing the memes everywhere, <laughs> right? It's like literally you wake yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, and you have three daughters, don't you? I do, yeah. So like, what's that like around the house? Like, what are you doing all day? You know, my kids have been amazing. Um it, it, in, a, in a silver lining kind of way, it's been really cool to spend that time with them. I mean, you go through the season uh, and you're so busy. Uh, you know, you go to school, you go to practice, you're getting home late. Uh, you got a meeting, you're getting ready for the, the Brexel holiday tournament, whatever the case may be. But I mean, there's days that I get home and they're in bed and I didn't get to see them, you know. So I, I think one of the cool things, I guess, is that time that I've been able to spend with them. Um, and, and they've done a great job. They, they get up in the morning, they sleep in. <laughs> uh, but they get up, they eat, they do their schoolwork. They, um, they, they're all gymnast and you know the younger two play soccer whatever and they 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 do their workout gym world's been great about sending out workouts for them and they do that and then i guess they do what teenagers do and they sit on their phones and talk to their friends how old are your your girls um so i have an eighth grader a sixth grader and a second grader oh man you you are right in the you are in the war zone right now of like (laughs) yeah yeah pre-adolescence adolescence oh man (laughs) i'm gonna have my oldest in class next year so that'll be pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, because she'll be a freshman and yeah. What are you? High school PE? Uh, health. I teach health at the high school. Okay, yeah. you're not PE. You're health. Okay. You've been PE before, haven't you? You've always been yeah. health. Yeah, I taught middle school phys ed for about eleven years at Brexel, and then they moved me to the high school to do health um, because the previous health teacher left, and I, I've been up there for about I don't know eight years, nine years. How many years are you into like STRS? Twenty. Um, 19 at Brexel, 21 total, but my first two were at Lake Catholic, so I didn't buy those years back. Yeah, so you got to go, you and I are basically like the same almost. Wow. That's crazy. So, you, and the longer you wait on the retirement years, the, the more expensive they get to buy those two years back, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know if there's ever a good time to buy them. You know, when you're young, you don't have the money. As you get older, you got kids and you're thinking about their college. I, it just, I don't know. It's a lose-lose. Okay. So... Uh, I've talked to Clay Wanger. I talked to Bernie, Coach Burnett, um, Wadsworth, Illyria. I've, I don't know who I'm going to get to talk to from St. Edward. Probably Gus, if I can get a chance to talk to Gus. Um, but, you know, we were going to have one heck of a Division One state tournament this year. Division One and Division Two were going to be two of the greatest state tournaments as far as parity this year that we were going to have. Obviously, it's not going to happen now, but... Did Brexville qualify eight or not? You guys qualified eight, didn't you? Uh, we had nine. You had nine, and so yeah. did Wadsworth. They had nine as well, right? Wadsworth had ten. Wadsworth had ten. They had ten. Yeah. So nine, ten. What Bernie have? Nine or ten? Uh, I think Galeri had nine. And then Ed said 12? 
12, yeah. Yeah. So when you look at it, it was just going to be like, it was going to come down to the finals, actually, I think. Yeah, good. What, what do you think of um, two of your best guys ever, you know, that have come to the program, your only beast of the East champ, Jimmy Carmony, who just uh, committed to Northern Illinois. You don't get to see him go out as a senior. Ethan Hatcher who's going to Cornell. We don't get to see him go out. Um, what do you say to those guys, Todd? I mean, I, I don't know, Zeb. Like I said, probably for the first time in my career, like I, I was lost for words. I, I, I didn't, I didn't have the answers for those guys, and that was really difficult. Um, it's a shame. I think that uh, when it all went down, when we met with them the, the day we were going to depart, I think the hard part there is um, we, we were probably a little selfish, meaning I don't know that we really understood the, the, the magnitude of this. And so you get to that point of the year and you got blinders on and we're just worried about nine guys in the state tournament and probably have no idea what's going on in the world around us. Um, and, and so even, you know, as things started to cancel, you started to get an idea. I think when we, when we first had to talk to them, I, I don't, I don't know that we really understood it. And so I think there was a lot of like resentment and anger and, you know, I, I think fast forward to now, um, kind of understand why it happened, you know, um, and, and, and wrestling is pretty cool, but there's bigger things in lives, uh, in life than wrestling and people are, are losing loved ones and stuff. So, um, I, I don't know. I think Jimmy and, and, and Ethan are, are, are pretty neat kids and I, I think they get it. You know, they're, they're, they're really different kids. Um, but I, I think they're, they're both going to go on a Russell division one. They both had awesome careers. Um, this, this, I don't think will define them as a wrestler. It was just, um, tough pill to swallow for now. So um, you have Vanadia as your 95, right? Yeah. And then I, I see the Purdue shirt. He's actually going to – he committed to Purdue, right? Yeah, I wish I could say it on purpose, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so you got him, and then we have you have Vic Voinovich, who's a state champion as a freshman, third last year as a sophomore. He's not going to get a chance to win his second state title You know, here as a junior. That guy's still on the board. He's one of the best guys yeah. out there still on the board. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think one of the things I don't know if irritates the right thing, but I hear people say like, man, I really feel for this kid or that kid. I think it just affects everybody differently. You can look at Ethan Hatcher, who never gets a chance to win a title, or Jimmy Carmody, who never gets a chance to win a title. But for Victor, um, you know, I don't know how it would have happened or not happened, so I don't want to come off arrogant, but um, he, he doesn't get a chance to be a three-timer. You know, he doesn't get a chance to have his pitcher in the tunnel as people walk through the state tournament for, for kids, that's a, that's a big deal. You know, for, for, um, Pito Castro, who's a, our six pounder, we think was pretty tough. He doesn't have that opportunity for Caden Jett, uh, a freshman who doesn't have a chance to be whatever, right. A, a four-time champ, a four-time finalist, a four-time place winner. Uh, he just doesn't get the opportunity to compete period, which is I think huge for, um, kids development in the sport. You know, you get down there and you compete down there as a freshman or a sophomore. Um, it helps a lot moving forward. So, um, uh, Everybody lost a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at my nephew. He qualified in Division Three at 182. He'd never made it out of a sectional tournament, and he won the district this year. He was in a great Good position, friend. you know, to set up to be a top three guy, I think. Um, yeah. You know, I really feel for him because, like, now if we have the, turn, the, the season next year, which, I, you know, now I'm seeing stuff about this might affect the fall season, right? Um, yeah. Now – his first attempt at trying to place in the state tournament or win a state tournament is going to be his senior year potentially. Right. And, and like you're saying, Pito Castro, you need that guy down there to get experience as a freshman, you know, to try and win multiple titles for you, but you got to get him in there first. Now we got guys who are next year is going to be their first year. And I think that's, that, you know, obviously it steals a year from everybody, but you know, we don't get to see Seth Shoemate be the, maybe the greatest big man in the history of Ohio. There's going to be an asterisk next to his name. He's pretty good. Right, obviously you got a guy at his weight who's going to have to go after him next year, but that guy's pretty good. Your guy Vanadia is pretty good, and they were probably you know a good position to wrestle, right? Yeah, I mean that, that was the hope, right? I think Shumate is is certainly the favorite on paper, but uh, he's, he's human, right? So Shumate doesn't get the chance to win four titles. Um, ben Vanadia doesn't get the chance to maybe shock the world and knock off a guy like Shumate. Who knows, right? But um, both of them get stripped of that type of of, of opportunity. Uh, you know, if you look at Division Two, obviously Louisville was in a great position. Lake Catholic was in a great position. Your alma mater, um, Graham. I mean, it was going to be it was going to be a total barn burner coming down to the wire. I mean, 
You had all the, you know, Aurora, right? We had all these teams that were in this incredible position. To, and, and and how about Graham? Graham loses their streak, right? Like all this crazy stuff, right? Like we're we're not thinking about it. And then in Division Three, Milan Edison is, I mean, dude, they're gonna they're gonna win by thirty or forty points. So it's just like there's just so much going into it. And like you said, there's all these guys that we're not gonna get to see potentially earn a title in Ohio. Who, like you're saying, Carmody and Hatcher, they got bigger and better things going into Division One next year. Both of them one got a Cornell guy and a Northern Illinois guy. But um, when you look at your juniors, you know you got Vanadia. He's got, he committed to Purdue, Purdue, and he's a runner-up last year, right? Yeah, runner-up as a sophomore, uh, and uh, obviously. Vic, Vic's coming back. He's been a state champ for you. What do you say to those guys? You know, like that's very different than the other two guys. Carmony, you know, uh, Carmony's obviously, and they just—they're not going to get a chance to wrestle their senior. What do you say to those juniors coming back? Well, I, you know, I think that we've all gotten a little bit of a lesson of maybe you don't know what you have until it's gone, you know. And so I think that that Ben and, and Victor, um, I don't know that they need to hear it from me. They're pretty smart. They, they, I think there's some gratitude that they get, a, they get another shot at this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Again, it doesn't make it any easier, I guess. Um, but, um, I, you know, for, for those guys, at least they get the opportunity to come back and do this one more time, we hope. We don't even know if Fargo's on the table right now, Todd. I know you're big into the Far- Fargo scene. i um, usually out there every year, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's something we don't even know about that right now. Um, they've pushed back the 2020 Olympics to 2021. Same time frame, like late July to August. So it's pushed back a year. That obviously changes a bunch of stuff, but um, Victor's won Fargo. Victor Voinovich. Uh, he was runner-up. Runner-up. He's been a finalist in Fargo, right? Yeah, yeah. he was third as a cadet, runner-up as a junior. He's third as a cadet. I thought he was a cadet champ. He was third, though. Okay. So when you look at him, that guy's had huge success there, and that's a big part of why people would want to recruit him. But you've had how many champs before? You had uh, J- Johnson was a champ. Yeah, yeah. Tag was a champ. Tag. Um, Victor was a was a runner up. Um, yeah, you put me on the spot. I don't, I don't know. I think those were the only two from Brexville, though. So, but but my point is like Brexville's really, you do an excellent job of putting guys out in Fargo, and then that puts them on the stage, whether it's on the stage or not. But they're placing top three, top top eight, right? You place top eight in Fargo in freestyle. I don't care if it's cadet or junior. It's a big deal. College yeah, coaches look at that. I was you know tweet, uh, texting with Jeremy Johnson today or yesterday or whatever about this and and just the opportunity that Fargo provides kids in terms of college opportunity to exposure and potential college money and um it's it's, I guess it's it's bigger than just the opportunity to compete it it, it can shape their lives and so um you know uh we, we might not have that and that's a guy like you bring that name up you bring Jeremy Johnson up now he's like one of the best coaches in Ohio one of the hardest workers he was a two time All American at Ohio University um that guy right there, you know, that's a guy, I look at that guy and I'm like, that would have really hurt him. At least confidence wise, that hurts someone like that. And think about this. Think about that. This happens. Jeremy Johnson's senior year. He doesn't want a state title. And he doesn't want a Fargo title. Right. Right. That's crazy. Right. That changes the trajectory of that guy's life. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're not wrong there because that guy, and I think the biggest thing with him was he gained so much confidence as well. I mean, I, I don't think you and I can say enough good stuff about that guy, right? Yeah, I remember the days of you working out with him at the cadet camp. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. My body does too. He was just tough, man. What a good guy. Though. Avon's got a – I think Avon had a guy who could have won too. They had a pretty good guy too. Yeah, they had a guy in the mix at 95. Um, he's done an amazing job out there. I mean, he was Division One Coach of the Year. He didn't get his presentation or ceremony because that was going to happen at the state tournament, but – uh, was the Division One Coach of the Year last year, so super proud of him. And um, yeah, he had he got a kid in '95 who was fourth in the state a year ago and committed to Ohio University and uh, was very much in the mix. And then he had another returning place winner uh, at 113, and then he had his heavyweight qualify. So yeah, he had three kids that um, didn't get to wrestle as well. That's crazy. Greer, right? The '95 is Greer. Isn't right. it? I like mm-hmm. that guy. That guy's pretty good. Um, Coach, yeah. where do we go from here? What's the new normal? Um, you're you're a health teacher. This obviously changes things for you, how you teach the virus and the virus, right? How you teach viruses now, right? They're very – because vi- you do teach that, right? That's something you talk about in health. Yeah, I, mean, I was telling my kids what's crazy is like in 20, 25 years, whatever it is, like we're going to 
hopefully I'm done teaching by then, but people are going to be talking about this in school, right? Like people are going to be asking my kids, your kids, Hey, what did you do during the, the quarantine? You know, um, it's kind of wild. It's totally wild, man. Cause it's like my kids obviously won't remember, but your daughters who are soon yeah. going to know a lot more than you. Um, <laughs> Dude, trust me. I had to get a, my, for school, I had to get a Google classroom set up and stuff. And, uh, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I, my, my kids. Did they help you a lot? Oh yeah. Yeah. They're awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I was. I posted some assignments last night. I did like a like a seven or a ten minute, uh, I guess, lecture. I don't know. Um, I did some PowerPoint presentations, and I do it just like literally how we're set up here right now. Um, yeah. I just, I just record the part of the screen that's got the PowerPoint presentation on it, and um, and another thing, I teach a current issues class. It's like they got to go look at the news, they got to report the news, and they got to find different sources to report from, and it's like. It's the new normal, man. I guess that's the question. Like, what is our new normal? Do you have an answer for what? What is the new normal, Todd? I don't. Cause I don't know. Man, Zeb, I don't know. It's such uncharted waters. I felt like um, when we were on lockdown until that, um, you know, April sixth date. It was like, okay, we were all uh, in, in a little bit of um, depression about losing the state tournament. But then it was kind of like, you know, these guys to get off the mat for a little bit is probably a good thing. That was a three week deal. Um, to find out yesterday or today that we're, we're locked down for another month. I don't know. I mean, you know, these kids got to be dying to, to just, just to get out and wrestle and, um, yeah, they can run and they can, some of them can lift at home or do some things at home. That's pretty cool. Um, and so, um, man, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the normal is. I can't imagine what some of these diehard kids are, are, are going to be feeling in terms of wrestling in the next few weeks. Yeah, it just it blows my mind too, man. Like, what are where are people getting their their fix, their workout? Like, what what are they doing yeah. right now? It's it just blows my mind. Like, I started running again. I, yeah, believe it or not, I like I usually what'll happen is I don't run through the winter because it hurts my joints because it's cold. Um, I've been getting at it. I've been doing. I'm up to two miles now, and it's just like, okay, I'm doing this. What are these complete psychopaths doing? Yeah. Who got to have wrestling in a part of their life? And it's like. Vic Voinovich, that guy works out a lot. The dad works out a lot. You know, like, they like to work out. Like, what are guys like that doing? You know what I mean? The Burnettes, they're nuts, right? Like, I know Eric's, Eric told me he jumped rope. <laughs> You're going to love this. I, I watched it. I watched yeah, it. Like, I jumped terrible. rope, but I got a really good playlist. So I was only going to go 25 <laughs> minutes, so I went 38 minutes instead. I'm like, dude, you're 50. What are you doing? You're 50. You're jumping rope yeah. for 38 he's minutes. A, what are you doing, you maniac? He's you know, a freak. He's a total freak, and they're just mutants. I can't imagine what his brother's doing with this kid, Gray. I mean, it's, <laughs> the whole thing just it blows my mind. You guys got a really cool area over there, man, with that that Brexville uh, reservation. Like I said, you and I were talking off camera. It, it runs into the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. You should go spelunking or something. I mean, you really can't in the cave, but Deer Lake Cave is right there. How far do you live from Deer Lake Cave? Do you even know? I, I don't know, but we're we're minutes from the Metro Parks. We were uh, Sunday off camera. We had the kids out there yesterday, just walking. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The Red Trail is the trail we took. It's a Red Trail. You start and you can do like a four mile loop. My kids made it. My two year old made it three point four miles, and then we had to carry him the last mile. And then my son Ferd made it. He's four. He made it four point four. So well, and it's just cool. It's a lot of you know going through the valley up and down and big fallen trees. They're you know, they're balancing, doing all types of crazy stuff. And the goal is obviously to wear them out. But um, yeah, there's just so much to do over. There's a lot to do around here. I feel bad for the people in Northwest Ohio where it's just like flat and there's not anything to do and it's just windy all day. I'm like, what are those people doing, man? What are those guys doing? Um, On Twitter today, I saw T.R. Foley. You know what T.R. Foley is? Yeah. T.R. Foley uh, actually had COVID-19 is what he, he stated in his in his tweet. Um, and wow. then he left and um, took his daughter with him. He has a baby daughter. And they went to, like, I want to say Chesapeake Bay Area. But, like, he, and he, now he's recovering, right? I, I'm just I'm telling you, that's what his tweet said. It was like a four section tweet. But, like, this is affecting people, right? But someone like you gets it, Todd, you're probably going to be okay. How important is it that, you know, as a health teacher, how important is it to adhere to what they're telling us to do? Well, they're a heck of a lot smarter than me. So, you know, you, you, you trust them and you take their advice. And um, it, it's um, I think what's difficult is like um, my wife, for example, is a physical therapist. And so she's in the medical field. And um, 
you know, she goes to work. Her hours have been cut a, a bit, but she goes to work every day and she's, she's trying to help people, right? Which is great. And I want her to do that. That's awesome. Um, but then there's part of that wonders like, you know, then she comes home and, and we got three kids at home and, you know, I, I don't know, man. So if they're telling us to stay home, you know, we, we probably need to stay home as much as I'd like to get some kids together and, and, and get them wrestling a little bit. You know, I, I think we probably need to sit home and listen. Yeah. Uh, Clay <laughs> Wenger, he's in the same boat as you, his wife, she's, she's the nurse. And I was like, dude, what yeah. do you do when she comes home? He's like, oh yeah, all the clothes got to. She's got to wash her clothes immediately. She's got to go shower immediately. But it's like those healthcare workers, man, they're on the front line of it. You know, I'm talking to Mike Matten. Like you're saying, you want to talk about a real expert. Mike Matten, he's like, this is no joke, man. This is no yeah. joke. And, and, you know, it's just the real deal. Ferdinand, can you say hi to Coach real quick? What's up, Ferd? Say hi. How was your hike? You you're gonna, oh, while you're talking, that's good. Yeah, he uh, tries to knock his brother down a lot. I think his brother tries to uh, – <laughs> He's, he's trying to check his brother's balance constantly, you know. How do your daughters? Do they get along, Todd? Yeah, they, they do, man. They're, they're, they're awesome. They, they, um, I mean, they, listen, they, they push each other's buttons, don't get me wrong, but they, they get along really well. They're good kids. Okay, so like you're saying, you know, you, you have to adhere to the authorities. You want to get kids together and have a workout. When do you think is like the feasible time that they're – I mean, if, we're, if, we're, if May 1st is our date back, it, you, right? It just Was it May 1st that they said we were going to go back? Yeah, well, yeah, that was the um, the earliest date, which is a Friday. So really, I think it would be May 4th would be the first that we're back at school. So let's say we go back May 4th. When do you think, uh, let's just say it happens. It's probably not going to. But let's say it happens. Would you try and get workouts in like as soon as they said, hey, it's safe to get workouts in? Yeah, I mean, I think if as soon as they allow us to, even doing some small group stuff, Deb, I think we would do it. I mean, um, you know, I think one of the things that I've learned through this whole thing is I don't have any hobbies. You know, I, it's, it's <laughs> like wrestling. <laughs> you know? I've always known uh, that about you. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I got these, like, notes in my phone about, like, if they let us do, like, groups of four. Like, I get these four and these four and these four. And um, I think as soon as they let us um, have any type of group, interaction we're gonna do it um not not because i think wrestling is the end-all be-all i i just think it's important to these kids um m mentally and socially and, and physically so as soon as we're allowed to we're gonna do it you know terrell delagnev was talking about the mental health aspect of this now there's people that, that that's a big part of this man like there, there's guys that are yeah. going to be they're hurting they're hurting, man, and they're not going to ever get answers as to why they couldn't wrestle their senior year. But how important is that mental health aspect to you and getting kids back socialized and, and getting them back into a normal routine, Todd? I, I think it's huge. I mean, I think, um, you know, coaches all preach it, but this is like family to them. You know, they're, they're teammates. And um, we had a group this year that got along so good. It was a blast. And so um, I think it's important that, um, you know, I think routine is really important. And, you um, I think they all have this void that they, you know, are experiencing because they're not able to kind of get out there and, and, and do what they love to do. Did your wife point it out to you or who pointed it out to you? Or how did you figure out you have no hobbies? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's pretty obvious, I think. I mean, I, I don't, I, you know, Deb, I don't golf. I don't drink. I don't gamble. I don't, I, I don't know what else. I don't fish. I don't hunt. I don't, it's, it's, it's literally, uh, be a dad, be a teacher, and wrestling. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it blows my mind. That's what it took for you to figure out. I don't have any hobbies. I love it. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, man, Brexter Reservation, that place is the best. You got to go there more often. And you're like, oh, yeah, we took them there the other day. I just don't get there much, and it's five minutes from your house. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've had you got some really cool rivalries in Ohio. What's it like having being so close to Eric Burnett and having a rivalry with Illyria? Um, it's cool. You know, our, our, um, I'll use your word rivalry with O'Leary is probably different than our rivalry, if you will, with, um, Wadsworth or, or Maslin Perry or Eds, um, from a standpoint that, and maybe a lot of people don't know this, us and O'Leary work out together a ton. Like in the off season, we train together a, a, an awful lot. Uh, we, we do the freestyle state duels. We make a, um, a team with basically, you know, our, our kids and they, they compete together. Uh, we go to the beast of the East together. Um, you know, uh, both very into Fargo. And so we're out there. We do a, an awful lot uh, with the Illyria kids. Um, and I, 
you know, a lot of people, I don't think, understand that. They're like, well, why would you train with them if, if you're going to have to compete against them in February and March? Well, um, because they're pretty good, right? Because Dil- Dylan Shaver and Mick Burnett and Nate Burnett and Fenton's and whatever, they're, they're, they're the best kids out there. And so we want to train with those guys. And, um, you know, Eric's, he's the best, you know. And so uh, we want our kids around Eric. And so that's a unique rivalry, um, I think, because our kids do a lot together, Um where like the wives were one, you know, we, um, I think our kids, a lot of them are friends, you know, from the Fargo stuff and whatnot, but we don't train with them the same way, you know? And so, um, totally different, you know, when we were kind of building our program, Eric was probably a couple of years ahead of me in terms of being a head coach. I mean, he took O'Leary from, you know, some, some, some not so good times to being pretty awesome. Um, and, um, for us, I think that like the Wadsworths and the, and the Maslin Perry's of the world were the exemplary bars for us you know i got a ton of respect for john gramugli and dave riggs and you know what what they did at those schools for the duration was incredible they weren't just good for a couple of years i mean we're talking like 20 years they were they were in the top three the top five i mean I, when was the last time wadsworth wasn't in the top 10 at the end at the end of the state tournament you know so um kind of different yeah I, i'd say that we have a rivalry with Elyria because the programs are both doing pretty well um but it's it's just it's different Coach Heffernan said that that's the thing he's most proud of when I talked to him after they won the state duels. He's like, that's the thing I'm most proud of about St. Edwards. Um, and you guys are starting to turn that over where you're having, like like I said, you know, you've had multiple champions in uh, in Fargo. You haven't had multiple All-Americans yet in Division One wrestling. You've had Jeremy Johnson, yeah. right? So that yeah. that's coming. Yeah. I think I just if you're asking me, I, I think that's coming. But um you know, you look at it, you know, and I come from Oak Harbor where they've had multiple Division One All-Americans and NCAA a D2 champ. So, you know, I come from a good program. You know, you know, you come from Lake Catholic. Yeah. That's a great program, right? They've had multiple Division One yeah. All-Americans. So it's, it's a place where you know, like, the good programs. Um, how how do you get a program like that? How do you try – I know you guys are all trying to emulate what they're doing at St. Ed's. Um, how do you have the sustainability? How did John Gramulia – what's, what's the blueprint for Todd Haverdale to be like – Dave Riggs, John Gramulia, Greg Urbis. How do, how do you get to that? What Eric's done at Elyria. Um, obviously, what Coach Jordan did at, at St. Paris Graham. How do you emulate that? You know, I don't I don't know that there is a, a blueprint, but I think if you look at the schools that you just mentioned uh, and you look for common denominators, one of the big ones is they, they wrestle in the offseason, right? I mean, uh, when we were trying to build, uh, the kids from Eds were on the Fargo team and they were – um, having success out there. And the um, Wadsworth kids were wrestling freestyle and the Mass and Perry kids were wrestling freestyle. And um, Graham didn't have as many, but they were wrestling all summer because of the camps, right? So those guys were training. Um, I don't know if I, if it's fair to say year round because you like multiple sport athletes, but uh, man, they, they were putting an awful lot of time in, in the off season. So I, I if anything, I, I think that's, that's the biggest takeaway. Two of the best guys ever out of St. Ed's, were Brexville guys, right? If you look at Lang and you look at uh, yeah. Bertin, right? They're Brexville guys. Yeah. If it's a different era, maybe they don't go to ads. They come to, to Brexville. I mean, have you ever thought about stuff like that where you can keep guys where you guys are? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you think about it a lot. To be honest with you, I think um, in terms of us turning our program around, um, I hate to put it on one person because there was a lot of people that had a lot to do with it, but, but Kyle Lang staying at Brexville, was huge for our program, right? His brother was a four-time champ at Ed's. Um, and I think the assumption was just that Kyle would go to Ed's, right? Um, Kyle being Kyle, and, and he does his own thing, that's for sure. Um, staying at, at Brexville, um, you know, that, that put us on the map. And I, I think Kyle Lang being at Brexville changed Jeremy Johnson's career, right? Because now Kyle's out there competing at NHSCAs and, and, you know, what we used to call filas and um, going to go to Fargo. And so he sort of paved the way for a lot of people. So um, I think people that are in a um, public school district like we are, uh, we've got to recruit our own kids. I mean, we've got to provide opportunities for them so that they have a reason to stay. Speaking of which, um, you know, you lost you lost the Tag Brothers to the Olympic Training Center. I don't, I don't really know how you compete with that. But um, those guys leave your program. Um, they're pretty good. Uh, one guy's a world medalist. Uh, they're just really good. They both won state titles for you at Brexville. 
you lose them. What was that like? And how did you, you were still competitive to win a state title. How do you do that losing two guys like that coach? Well, I think it's a culture, right? For, I think any young coach that takes over a program, uh, we've been fortunate to have some of our assistants take over other programs recently, right? Dubell's at Kenston and Adam Kerwinski's at Orange and um, Ty Mitch is um, kind of co-doing the Lake Catholic thing. And um, I think every one of them will preach to you that, that culture is probably the most important thing. And so, um, you know, everybody's got some good kids that are going to come and go, I guess. But uh, the culture of the program is super, super important. And so, you know, we had we had kids that won um, some state titles before I got there. You know, the Dominic Caruso's and the Joe Langs proved that it could be it could happen at, at uh, Rexall High School. And, um, you know, so so um, I, I think that's that's the answer is, is you just um, you keep uh, one of the things we try to do, I guess, is not have like, um, I don't know, like th- this is the way you coach Brexel High School. Like every kid is totally different. And I think it's our jobs to, to figure that out about that kid's personality and what buttons to push and um, try to get the most out of them, whether that's winning a state title or not. I look at, you know, all the coaches that you have and you've, you've had some really good assistant coaches like you just named off. Um, do you reach out and recruit coaches or do people to come to you about like the coaching staff is, you have a huge coaching staff, by the way. Um, usually when I'm sitting, I look over something like, Geez, he's got that guy on his staff. How does that work? And, and do you recruit or do people come after you? Um, I, you know, I try to keep relationships with people that have um, been close to our program. And so um, probably a little bit of both, probably more me um, annoying them to death. And so they say, okay, fine, I'll help. Um, but yeah, it depends. Like if you look at Phil Wellington, uh, who's on our staff and, you know, was a, a round of 12 guy and you know, beat Jaden Cox in, in, in college. And so we were fortunate enough to have him on our staff, which – um, probably has a little bit to do with Ethan Hatcher and Ben Venadia's success, right? Uh, you got this young stud coach who um, can still scrap and still roll around. I mean, the guy was training with Stipe. I mean, he's 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 a stud. Um, and so how does Phil Wellington end up on your staff? Well, he was teammates with Jeremy Johnson. And when Jeremy came home in the summers or whatever to work out, he Phil would come up to work out with him. And so you develop a relationship with Phil. And, um, you know, you, you follow his career and you text him and you try to help in any way that you can. And, um just develop relationships. Um, and then, you know, hopefully they, they're in a position where they can get back. I mean, Phil's an engineer. Um, it's not like he's a teacher and he just gets off work at, at three o'clock. I mean, he makes a lot of sacrifices. He lives in Euclid. He's an engineer. He just got married. Um, he makes a lot of sacrifices to, to be there. Um, you know, where the Aaron acids of the world, well, he, he was an alumni. Um, and, and so it's easy to stay in touch with him. And the hope would be that he'd come back and help us. Um, you got a guy like Darren Boyne who wrestled at Ohio university as well. Uh, but he was in our freestyle club when he was a little guy and just, just stayed in touch with him. You know, Billy Vaughn was an alumni, um, you know, Jimmy Capel shoot his family and, and mine grew up together. His brother, Nick and I, I mean, we did everything together. Brian Frito and Nick Capel and myself, um, we're, we were roommates in college. And so I think it's just staying in touch with people and communicate and develop relationships. And, um, hopefully they're willing to get back to the sport. What's next for you, and how many days a week do you have to post on your Google Classroom that you're just getting and figuring out? Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm really OCD. Um, you probably already know that. That's no surprise. But so, uh, I, you know, I didn't have a Google Classroom, but by the time I left school that day, I think I had every assignment posted through this April 6th. So now, getting the word that we got today, I got to sit down with my kids and figure out how to post the, the next wave of assignments. So, um my, my little, my eight-year-old was just um, asking me if she could help me with my Google Classroom. So I guess that's next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have like a big house? Where are they all spread out or do they hang out each other with each other? Um, both. I, they're, they're at an age now where like uh, they, they just, they go to their rooms a lot. Not because they're in trouble. Uh, maybe they're just sick of dad. I don't, I don't know. But um, they, 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 they get up and they eat their breakfast and they, go do their school. I see them when they want to eat basically, or they need something, uh, they need some help or whatever, but, um, they typically hang out in their rooms and do their schoolwork. And, um, they've been, they've been working out every day. Like I said, uh, they're gymnasts. And so they kind of do that together, which is pretty cool. How is my man, uh, Scott Dietre? He used to beat me up all the time. How is Scott Dietre doing? He's an administrator at the middle school, right? He's at the high school. She's assistant principal at the high school. Okay, so he's he's in your building. 
Yeah, yeah, he's actually my neighbor too, which is kind of crazy. I mean, he lives, and he has daughters too, he's right? Got, Scott has daughters, right? Two, two daughters. Yeah. So his old, his oldest and his youngest are uh, basically the same age as my oldest and youngest. Okay. So Scott's got two daughters that are similar, and are they friends? Do they hang out with your daughters at all? Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm not kidding. They live a few houses down. I think I'm going to show up and just beat him up someday. I just want to just show up and just roll him all around his yard and beat him up in front of his family. I owe him I, I so tell many kids felony you know. assaults. I mean, that – listen, he beat my brother and I up so bad every day. He beat – we had another guy who was a state placer, Steve Avers. He used to beat Steve Avers up. And then my buddy Pat Kenya, he was a state placer for us. Okay, I don't think he ever got a hold of Pat because Pat was like too big and young, I think. I don't know. But, like, that guy was, like, he was sadistic. He's, like, the nicest guy on earth now. I, I tell our kids sometimes, you know, they, these students a lot of times immediately get this, like, um, us versus them type of mentality. And, you know, they're administrator. And, and, and um, he, he's really good to our program, obviously. But I tell our kids sometimes, like, what a, what a bad dude he was. And I don't think they understand. Like, the dude was a Fargo All-American and yeah. Russell Division One, and, and um, had those credentials probably – um, more than anything because he was mean. He was so mean. My brothers, <laughs> my two oldest brothers, Ferd and Chad, called him uh, Manson, like Charles Manson. <laughs> <laughs> Nicknamed him yeah. after all the serial He's killer. Fine. Um, so he's a really good guy, though. And then um, Dry Poulter's still uh, uh, admin, or a yeah. uh, guidance, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dry Poulter. He's, I like Dry Poulter. He's a good guy. But, uh, okay, Coach, you got anything else for me today? Are, 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 you know, I always I like to open up. Maybe maybe we can have the airing of grievances. Uh, but I want to maybe when you come over after you beat Detroit up, you can come over and I can beat you up. I don't. If there's airing of grievances, I don't know. You got to tell me. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I default. I remember the, you know those days you uh, whooping on Jeremy Johnson at Barber yeah, that, Camp. I don't want any party. I don't either. think that happened. Um, <laughs> but uh, hey, man, everything's as good as it can be right now. Everybody's healthy over there, though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it it could be a lot worse. I mean, these are tough times, but um, you know, I think at the end of it, uh, hopefully, a lot of good comes of it. You know, just some creativity, and you see the amount of people that are outside running and biking and hiking, and you know, so maybe developing some good habits. Maybe some kids are watching, um, you know, some some film. The NCAA's was on an ESPN the other day, you know, and so um, you know, I learned how to do Google Classroom, you know, so hopefully some good comes from this. Do you get to go out and run and do any exercise? I know that you don't have any hobbies, but you just sit around and worry about wrestling? Um, you know, I try to exercise a little bit just because metabolism's, you know, it's for real. Um, but not nearly as much as I should. And then I watch Burnett's interview and I just feel terrible about myself. Listen, <laughs> I was 250 probably when we started here. I guarantee you I'm over 260 pounds right now. My wife's like, we're <laughs> eating a lot. And I was like, don't yeah. Don't I know we are, and like I wanna, I'd like to go drink beer, but I, I just like can't bring myself to do it. There's like no occasion, and I like to only do it socially. I'm like, ah, oh, I like, I like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna drink a beer today. And I don't, I don't do it. I don't understand that. That might, maybe I got a problem. Like that's weird. That's weird because it's like delicious, right? I don't understand it, Coach Haverdell. But you know, like coming from a guy like you who's never drank beer, I'm sure you don't know. I yeah, I never had a sip. It's kind of crazy. Never had a sip. That's so crazy, dude. You've never done like anything. Have you ever even been into? Did you go to the 2015 uh, Worlds? I did. So you have been in a casino because the thing was in a it was attached to it. You had to go through a casino in order to get to your 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 hotel room, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of pathetic. My wife loves to make fun of me, but like you go to the the U.S. Open last year, you know, and we had Victor Russell in the Junior Open, and so you stay at that South Point, which is a casino. Um, but it's off this trip in Vegas, right? Yeah. And my wife, like, so what did you do? I'm like, I, I never, I never left the hotel. What do you mean? What did I do? It's like, you went to Vegas and you didn't leave the hotel. I'm like, no, they wrestled all day and they have this awesome buffet and I would eat my Victor cut weight. And then I don't know, watch does that, uh, Miller interviews on my phone and go to bed and do it again. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> do you wrestle at all anymore? No, no. I had, um, this really kind of crazy, weird injury. Um, as a coach, I, I was never, um, I, you know, I used to, I think Kyle Lang kind of retired me, you know, as he got bigger and I was still wrestling and he just got really good. Um, but then even after that, just kind of whatever. And I tore my, my pack off my humerus and like snap back into my chest doing nothing. 
And so I had this weird surgery and um, it was like nine days before I was leaving for the world championships with Jeremy when he made the junior world team. Um, and I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. So yeah. no more wrestling for me. All right. So uh, I'm sorry. I got to top you. Um, okay. Thomas, my son was just born. He was a baby. Thomas would have been like five months old. No, nah, he was like seven months old. And we went to eight months old. And I, we went to uh, this lake in Indiana where my cousin Buck, got he's got a ski boat and my cousin buck really good guy um he's a state placer for clay high school good dude but anyhow i was like oh yeah i want to ski and he's like all right i'll take you out so my wife and ferdinand were on the boat and then one of buck's daughters uh carly i think was on the boat and he tried to pull me up and i got up and i like started raising up and then i fell over and i'm like oh, okay and they, he does a circle i'm like oh and he brings me the the Handle back, does it again, and I start to raise up. I'm raising up, I'm raising up, and all of a sudden it feels like someone just like kicked me in the back of the leg, kicked me right in the back of the hamstring. I'm like, oh, and I like fall over, and he's like, hey, one more try. I'm gonna loop around, and I was like, and uh, and then I tried to like pull my leg up, and I couldn't pull my leg up into the crouch position, and I was like, oh man, this really hurts. So. Yeah. I like complained about it for like a couple of days and I like told my wife and everybody's making fun of me. They're like, Oh, Oh, maybe you need to lose some weight. Yeah. Maybe you could ski. If you could, you may, why couldn't you get up? So I remember I like, I crawled on the boat and I like had to hand them back the, the skis and I crawled onto the boat and I couldn't get in a position where I was like, I couldn't even sit comfortably. So I complained to my wife for like three or four days. And finally my legs on fire and I'm like, my leg really hurts. And she's like, listen, that's enough. Enough with the leg thing. I'm done hearing about the leg thing. She's like, that's it. I pull my leg up. I pull my pant leg up from the back of my knee all the way up to my butt was black. Yeah, I hamstring. tore my, I tore it off the bone. I tore my hamstring off, like wherever it attached, I tore it off. It wow. didn't, I didn't have to have it reattached, but I'm old. So we have, I guess the, we can let the cat out of the bag now. So Ben Venadia tore his hamstring this year. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah, and it was a nightmare. Um, was never right again, you know. And people that paid attention probably noticed that he didn't compete much towards the end of the year. Um, when did he tear it? Tear when did he tear it? Oh, it was like before the D. So right after the Brexel tournament. So he was good through December. He had a great Ironman and Beast in, in Brexel tournament, and then tore a practice uh before the um the d so right in that time early january and just never i mean you know he was probably off the mat on crutches for like three weeks and then would get him back in the room and do a little bit a little bit thought he was close and then um just would turn the wrong way and we'd take two steps backwards and yeah. then it's so no joke it, it, yeah i mean he never we never really got him back training I mean, he's rest you know we had this big brace on there just for some compression whatever but yeah he tore right behind his knee and so you know i don't know talk about the silver lining stuff for ben uh it's gonna allow his, his hamstring to heal so i Jeez, guess that's good beats. that's crazy and the biggest thing is yeah. like you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you know and everybody else is trying to feel out what's wrong with him right how did he do in his district his sectional district todd did he win um, he was, he won the sectional. He was runner up in the district. Um, did he wrestle in the district final? Yeah, he did. He had a lead. And, and I think the, um, you know, credit to Liz from Wadsworth, he, you know, got a late takedown and put an overtime and took him down. Um, you know, I think for Ben, just not being able to train, um, he, that kid, uh, his style really predicates on his conditioning. You know, he's, he's a monster. Um, but when you're not training, man, it's, it's difficult. So, um, never complained, you know, he never made an excuse, never complained. And I don't mean it that way. I mean, um, just again, trying to find some silver lining from this quarantine and, and being off the mat, you know, maybe some guys like him get to heal up. You know, you look at the, um, the Olympics getting postponed, you know, um, how about some guys that maybe were dinged up and weren't maybe going to be ready for the trials that now will be, um, pretty interesting, right? Um, what's going on with college and will there be, can he get an Olympic year next year? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh maybe. yeah. I, I would only, I mean, there, like a Yanni could get two Olympic years. That's crazy, right? right? Yeah. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> Michich, two Olympic years. 
I mean, two Olympic years. Like we, the list goes on, right? It's just wild to think about it. And how about those seniors this year? Like you said, it's just like we have Didn't a list Michi of Garden hundreds. Make an Olympic year? I could be wrong on that, but I thought Stefan took one at Northwestern. I think Stefan can get another one, dude. Yeah, I, yeah. And then they're talking about letting the seniors come back, which at, at first I was like, yeah, you got to give them the year back. The college guys, they, right? But they did ninety five percent of the year, man. They did ninety five percent of the season. I, I mean. Well, just just the um, the math of scholarships and the nine point yeah. nines, and how about that guy who was going to be as this was his time? He was a senior, but then you let these seniors come back, and then that guy yeah. doesn't get his chance. And, and it trickles uh, way down; it goes all the way down to current freshmen. Do you realize that? Because it changes how they recruit them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. It's crazy nightmare. how much is affected. It's a nightmare, dude. So, all right, are we good? Do you got anything else for me? No, I'm good. Just um, text me the place of the hike in Brexville, and and uh, that's it. Oh, just shoot. There's a video of it. You can just take your, you can walk there with your daughters. You All right. get I'm a gonna hobby. Take them, Maybe the silver lining here is you're gonna get a hobby. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna hike like Zeb Miller. I mean, dude, I'm hiking with a two and a four year old. Come on, it, it, it can't be that intense. So, all right. Uh, hey, stick around real quick. Don't hang up. I'm gonna cut right. this video real quick. Thanks for the time, Coach. All right, just wait for me. Yeah, thanks.